Hi everyone, welcome back to Workshop. Today I'm kicking off a new project, probably going to be a two-parter, possibly even a three-parter, we'll see how it goes. Uh, this one is all about the house burglar alarm and I want to make some pretty drastic modifications to it. A um, little bit of a story in what, behind uh, this project. We were going away on holiday uh, a, a week ago and I forgot to set the burglar alarm. And I didn't notice until we were halfway down the motorway on our way to our destination. So, of course, I had to go and phone the neighbours, etc, etc, and get them to switch it on and all the rest of it. So I thought, wouldn't it be a great idea if I could log into the burglar alarm, much like you can do with much more expensive burglar alarms, and turn on the alarm, turn off the alarm, maybe do a little bit of monitoring, that sort of thing. And also, wouldn't it be a great idea if somebody did uh, break into the house etc that the burglar alarm could possibly text me on my mobile phone to let me know that there was a problem at the house so of course my burglar alarm doesn't have any of those functions built in it's a you know a much more simpler cheaper unit so I thought wouldn't it be great to stick an Arduino inside the burglar alarm what else and uh, build in that functionality so here is the paddle itself, it's a Yale burglar alarm, it's a wireless PIR, door sensors etc. It's got a nice LCD, it's got a, a keypad matrix in the front and five uh, control push buttons up here for navigating the various menus on the LCD. So this is it, like I said, it's wireless, all the PIR sensors, door sensors, window sensors, they're all wireless, as is the external siren. So. Of course, I don't really want to take this one apart. I don't want to jeopardise the house security whilst they're working it. So I've actually gone ahead and bought a second-hand panel, just the panel only, from eBay. So let's take a look at that now. So here's the actual panel itself, the second-hand one I've bought off eBay. It's an, it's an HSA 6400 panel, or system as it's known. Um, not quite sure if they're readily available new anymore. I'm not so sure that they haven't been superseded by a new Yale unit. Uh, however, I did manage to find a, a second-hand panel on its own without buying all the PIR sensors etc. Uh, which was a nice cheap find off of eBay. So I've actually gone ahead and opened it up and I've actually uh, started to make some modifications. So I'll run through uh, the, the internals of what we've got and what I'm looking to do. So this is the back of the unit here. It comes with a small um, panel uh, plate to mount it to the wall, which basically just hooks in here, much like a picture frame really, and it hangs that way. And then when you look at the inside here of the back panel, there's the, uh, the backup battery there, and there's a tamper switch there, um, which hangs off the back of the lugs that uh, hook onto the, uh, the wall bracket. Basically, if somebody tries to remove this from the, the wall, it will operate the uh, uh, tamper switch there and you know set the alarm, etc. So that's the actual back panel itself. So it's basically a dual PCB design. What you've got is the main board on the back here with the processor and all the other electronics. And then between that and the front panel itself, you've got an additional PCB. I think you can see it there. And that's for the... A keypad matrix for the front panel push buttons there, the micro switches for the tactile switches for the the, the front panel there. And so it's, there's virtually nothing on that board and you've got a wee uh, flat flex coming off of there up onto the main board. So everything happens up on the main board here. So what you've got in the lower part of the board here is basically the power supply section here. You've got the DC uh, coming in at the bottom right here and you've got all the various components to do with the power supply, the 5 volt regulator and you've also got the telephone interface. Um, this is an optional uh, part of the Yale design. Um, the one in the house that I've got doesn't actually have the telephone interface and that's why it's on a little wee uh, daughter board down at the bottom right here. Um, so a lot of the components here, the, the coil, transformer etc, and these large caps are all to do with the, the telephone interface which I'll not really be getting involved with at all. The top half of the board is where I'll be getting involved. At the left hand side here you've got a large transistor. This is actually the transistor that drives the internal sounder on the, the panel itself. Uh, and above that you've got the main microcontroller. 
It's a SyncMOS SM5964C40. That's an 8052 compatible microcontroller running at 40 MHz, 64K flash, 1K RAM, and it's got four 8-bit I.O. ports on it. Um, not really be getting involved directly on that there. Uh, it'll all become clear exactly what I'm doing uh, later on. Over in the middle here, you've got three surface mount ICs. That's buffer ICs, that's your 374 and your 244s, 74 series type, um, basically interfacing the bus of the microcontroller, etc., onto the rest of the system. And you've got a flat flex here, that's interfacing to the LCD on the front of the unit. Again, I won't really be getting involved with that either. Up at the top here, you've got these two add-on sort of modules here. These are the, the, the TX and the RX for the wireless network for interfacing to the wireless PIR sensors and door sensors, etc. So, what exactly am I going to do and how am I going to go about it? Well, considering that I want a web interface into the unit and I also want a GSM uh, connection to the unit. Uh, I'm going to need a Wi-Fi module and a GSM module. Now luckily enough those are readily, readily available uh, for the Arduino so I'll just be buying a couple of off-the-shelf GSM and Wi-Fi modules for the Arduino and interfacing it directly to this unit here. Now the, the way I'm going to, if, if we can start with the, the Wi-Fi module, what I'm looking to do is build a web page. Uh, this will act as a web server um, via the Wi-Fi module in the Arduino and I want to be able to remotely arm and disarm the uh, alarm via a secure password protected web interface. So what I decided to do and the easiest way for me to do that is what you've got on the front here is the keypad interface and the arm, alarm, arm and disarm buttons here. And the easiest way for, for me to interface into the system is to have the Arduino press these buttons for me. Um, now I've done a little bit of reverse engineering on the push buttons here and how it all interfaces and it's basically just a standard uh, keypad matrix where you've got rows and columns and pull up resistors on the columns. Um, so if I can just bring in a, a, a small sketch that I've done here, this is a typical um, 3x3 uh, keypad matrix where you've got three rows, you've got three columns and you've got some pull up resistors on the columns and then there's your actual panel switches uh, interfacing across the rows and columns. So obviously if you hit this button here it's going to uh, you know, interface back to the microcontroller on the row and the, the column. So that's the keypad. Now of course I want to get information out of the unit as well. I want to get information on the status of the alarm and the easiest way to do that is the drive circuit for the alarm sounder here, I can basically pick up a TTL signal on the board here which I've managed to, to find and feed that into an Arduino input and bingo that's that one done. And you've also got a couple of L status LEDs up here, one of them's for power and the other, and the other one is for uh, the status of the alarm. Um, it will come on when the alarm goes off and also when there's a problem with the alarm. For instance if a battery in one of the wireless PIR sensors goes down, uh, it will show up on here as well and that, that LED there will come on. So I can again TTL signal straight into the Arduino and I can read that status. Now the plan is of course like I said to interface the Arduino to this keypad here to uh, arm and disarm the alarm but I'm also going to interface onto these five switches here. They're part of the same uh, keypad matrix but I thought I, I'm, I'm, I'm just as well doing it. It's just an extra column on the, the keypad matrix. What exactly I'll use them for because uh, I kind of use for programming and setting um, various settings within the alarm. No real plan to do anything with them. However better in than out at this stage. So that's basically all the I.O. So I need to pick up the rows and columns for the keypad. 
I need to pick up the LED drive for the the LEDs in the front and also pick up the drive for the internal sounder down at the bottom here. And so the intention is to put an Arduino on here. Now there's not a lot of space inside this unit. If you look at the actual back panel itself here, you've got the, the battery in its uh, retention bracket here. That sits exactly in this sort of like recessed part, this cutaway section here. So I can't put anything there. Um, you've got this area here is free on the back panel, however all these raised components on the raised part of the PCB there all sit rather neatly into this section here. So we're basically looking at only the top half here. Um, you've got the RX and TX modules for the wireless PIR, they sit across the top here so I can't do much. So that leaves me only with this narrow band along the middle here. Uh, which is actually the deepest part of the, the back panel itself, luckily enough there. This narrow sort of recess, you can see it here on that sort of view there. Down down in here, I've uh, measured it and I've basically got 9 millimeters from the surface of the PCB here up before I'm touching the back, the internal of the, the back panel there. So it's 9 millimeters, and I've probably got uh, that whole strip there um, where I can actually mount uh, my PCB and I think that's going to be enough, 9mm is enough um, I'm going to design a PCB for this, it's all going to be surface mount so I think there's plenty of room in there for um, you know a, a small PCB, enough the Arduino etc and, and the, the MOSFETs to go on etc. One thing I can't mount up on here is the GSM module and the Wi-Fi module. Um, even if there was the space, which I'm not sure there is, I don't really want to because it's going to be really far too close to the TX and RX um, RF modules here for the wireless PIRs and, and I've just got a feeling that I'm going to get too much interference i.e. when the GSM module start kicks in and starts sending a text to my mobile phone it's going to disturb the uh, communications with the PIR sensors and maybe they'll all go offline and it'll just cascade into a whole load of errors there and then vice versa um, with these operating all the time communicating permanently uh, with the PIR sensors etc I don't want it to interfere with you know the Wi-Fi module for instance so what the plan is I'm still going to put the PC CB up on here, um, but I'm going to try and mount the the Wi-Fi module and the GSM module somewhere else. They're, I mean, they're just posted stamp sized boards more or less, so I should manage to squeeze them in, hopefully down at the bottom here somewhere uh, around this microphone input here, or or something like that, or you know in here or something like that. Uh, hopefully I should manage to do that and hopefully it should be far enough away that it don't get too much interface uh, interference from the RF modules up at the top there. Um, one thing, the GSM module does have an external antenna so I will be you know, having to drill a hole in the side of the box here possibly down at the bottom here and uh, there will be a, a, you know, the antenna will come out and then point up the way so it's only an inch and a half long something like that so that will go in the side there. The Wi-Fi module uh, has a built-in PCB based antenna so there's no actual wire or antenna as such itself so that's fine that'll just sit on the PCB somewhere in the back here um, luckily enough through the wall from where this is mounted is my server cupboard and where my router is so the actual Wi-Fi router etc for my internet is less than two feet away uh, from the alarm panel so uh, even if there's some restriction in the signal there um, and I was compromised slightly I don't think it would make too much difference there I'm still going to be pretty good and GSM coverage up in uh, my area where I live is pretty good so even deep inside the cupboard here and all the rest of it where the alarm panels mounted yeah, I think I'm going to get a good enough signal there so what I've got here is all the sketches and paperwork here I've, as I've started to sort of reverse engineer and design in how exactly I'm going to uh, interface to the alarm panel. Um, for instance here is the, the, the header information here is this header here. Uh, let's zoom in on that. 
where I've managed to pick up the rows and columns there. This is what this loom is here. I've actually, you know, wired it up already. There's a header on here that interfaces down through the flat flex onto the bottom board and it contains all the rows and columns so uh, I've managed to sort of just e very easily wire up onto that there and uh, with the PCB in here I'm anticipating that this loom here will basically be fanned off like that one wire at a time there up onto a row of fingers on the PCB and just directly soldered. I'm not going to use any uh, connectors or anything. I don't think I've got the room for that. They're just going to be soldered direct on. It will mean that, you know, I'm not going into production with this or anything like that. So I don't mind hard soldering in a PCB. Um, I'm only really going to be making one of them. So that's the idea there. Uh, this orange wire here uh, goes down uh, onto the the underside of the main, this main board here um, that's actually the fourth column uh, which is uh, operating these uh, five push buttons here so I picked up that signal there and that's coming up the same loom there so I've got basically uh, columns one to four and rows one to five all in here these wires here that I've uh, interfaced on the, on to the underside of the main board there. Um, I've just picked up 5 volts, such a red and green there, 5 volts DC. And this black and white wire here, that's from the two LEDs here, uh, which I've picked up. Um, measured them, great, 5 volts, there's no PW PWM or anything like that on them, it's just when the LED's on it's direct 5 volts, so that means it's really easy to uh, tie that back into uh, an Arduino input there. And then other than that, I've still got the buzzer, uh, or the alarm siren at the bottom here to interface to, uh, so going back to my sketches here, let's zoom out a bit, um, I've done a little circuit here uh, of there's a relay on the, P on the PCB which is basically driving the alarm siren and actually interfacing to the uh, telephone line socket here that's over here. There's this alarm signal here uh, I can pick up on so I can pick up either from the microcontroller driving the base of the transistor or I can pick up on the re actual relay uh, signal there. It doesn't really matter because both of them are 5 volt. Uh, again back to here we've got the LED drive here very very simple 5 volts onto the anodes and the cathodes is the side that switches so I can pick up my white and black wires there to pick up on that there and then this is just a quick sketch of my PCB uh, with the the 11 millimeters or the 9.75 millimeters that I've got and uh, that's my idea behind that there so also what I like to do at this stage here is just to work out exactly what the Arduino is going to look like I like to draw an IO map and to see exactly where we are. Now I've based this on 19 digital uh, I.O. lines and two analogues, i.e. much like the precision digital voltage source uh, uh, designed in my last videos, I'm going to convert the analog I.O.s on the Arduino into digital I.O. lines. So that gives me a total of 19. So I've got rows 1 to 5 and columns 1 to 4. I've got the alarm input and the LED drive there. So that's where we are there. So I've got plenty of I.O. but I like to lay it out at this moment in time just in case I run out, run out of I.O. when I've documented everything. At the moment I've got plenty left. I've even got two analog inputs um, which are I could possibly use, I could use that as a, a battery voltage monitor or something like that or the monitor the 5 volts DC on the main board. So going back to the interfacing of the keypad matrix, I have actually done some testing just to make sure it could be done with two MOSFETs and it is actually working so um, I've got that hooked up there, you can actually see I've got two uh, ZVN3306As and a, a couple of resistors there just to to simulate that there and they're interfacing on uh, I think it's row one and column one I think the black and blue wire there so we'll just uh, I'll just turn it over and I'll power it up and I'll show you that in operation there so I've got power into the panel at the moment as you can see uh, I've got the two mes MOSFETs over on the left hand side here um, interface to a row and a column, I can't remember which ones, and I've got 5 volts on the end of this wire here. So I'll just touch that onto the gates of both of the transistors, and if you watch the LCD, there it goes. And if I just uh, reset that there, 
show you what hap happened there. So the row and the column that I'd actually interfaced to were simulating either of these two push buttons here, not sure which one. Obviously if I press it I get exactly the same display there. So I'll just do it again. There it goes. Perfect. And before you see anything, uh, you did actually see me type in 0000 as the reset pin number for the alarm. Of course, that's the Yale default because the, um, the the software in here and all the settings has been has been totally reset back to default. So 0000 is not the pin number and won't be the pin number going forward for my alarm. So the next thing that I need to look at now is start laying out a schematic for the, the PCB and getting stuck into Eagle there and laying out a PCB and see what I can fit in that small area there. Um, I've got most of the wires, like I said, already soldered up and interfaced uh, here. I've just got the alarm sound I want to do then and I'm Obviously, I haven't got the Wi-Fi module or the GSM module yet. Still waiting on those two to arrive. But by the time uh, uh, I'll get the next video done, I should have the PCB assembled and I should have the GSM and Wi-Fi modules installed. And I should be part of the way along uh, getting the software written for the Arduino. So, thanks for watching.